Hello YouTube, this is Tova Smurf back with you guys again after a while. Um, lots been going on. Um, go. Not been able to get fraps to work properly, so uh, you know. And then got a new hard drive. So now that I have a new hard drive, it's basically a new computer. Um, been able to figure it out, and so I can record again. So yeah. Um, while this is going on. Quick update, uh, I just got back this last weekend um, from PAX Prime, uh, spent the weekend with uh, Smigetti, uh, hung out with uh, a comrade, didn't get to hang out with uh, with Alan, uh, AIDS9001, um, so that was really fun, it was a lot of fun just uh, hanging out with, uh, you know, your, <laughs> your friends that you've known for so long, um, been able to hang out with some of the wargaming uh, staff that I've met and come to know through all the tournament play that I've been doing with uh, the WGLNA. Um, in July we went up to Vegas to compete for the top eight teams, went to compete and we went there and um, yeah we lost in the first round um, but it was fun you know to be able to play tanks for money, um, meet all my teammates, meet all the other teams you know um, and, and just get to hang out, so it's a lot of fun, and um, um, as I'm recording this, tomorrow we have a finals matchup against uh, Fulcrum Gaming for one of the two spots to go to uh, the World Cyber Games, so that should be fun. Uh, so I'll be doing a lot of tournament stuff, so hopefully I can do videos in between. Um, that was close. You know, we'll see. Uh, I'll try my best to, but I'll be pretty busy with WCG and um, which ends tomorrow. But then coming up, I will have season two of WGLNA and want to repeat and try to go back to Vegas and go for a better a better run this time around. So, anywho, um, this is a quick replay of the FB 304. I wanted to start with this um, because playing already uh, already replay gives me time to brief you guys about what's been going on in my life. Um, I apologize if you guys hear a fan throughout this video here and there. Um, it is hot as hell. Well, not hot as hell. I've, I've been worse, but it's pretty hot by the standards of where I live. Um, and the AC's broken, so double whammy. Um, but yeah, anyway, here's the FB304. I started the British party grind um, at the Bishop, which is running the same gun as this thing but slow as shit, um, although it does have the most HP of all the tier 5 already, like that means much of anything, but like like you can tell in the minimap in 304 that it does not have full map um, range, which is a consistent thing regarding British artillery, even the end tier. Um, that hit is an anomaly, normally I'm doing about 100, anywhere between 50 to 140 ish, so on a direct hits, and this thing has no splash whatsoever, so you're basically counting on direct hits. Um, this is on the new Korea map, Sacred Valley. Um, as you can see, I'm in F3 behind a bush, also in a little bit of a depression. Um, I wanted to be able to support this north flank, uh, you know, because I really can only do one or two, and this is the weaker flank with the IS up here by himself, so I'm just trying to do a bit of damage for him, get things within one job range for him so you can rape him. Um, the 304, the greatest thing I enjoy about this thing is its speed, which you'll see in a bit, and its arc. The British artillery all have great, tremendous art. Um, I don't know much about the history of the tanks, but um, trust me, um, this thing shooting behind buildings, or shooting uh, over buildings to hit targets hiding next to a building is nothing new. Um, as you can tell, this is a little dinky little thing. Um, it's got great speed. Um, it can go up to 60, easy. Downhills, it's pretty lousy at about 70-something. So, um, yeah. Uh, I've already done a thousand damage this whole time I've been talking, so that's pretty much the chunk of replay. Um, but I just wanted to share this with you guys. I figure this is a good starting point. Um, I've got a lot of replays. This will be, I believe, a three replay video. Um, but I will be recording like six other destroyed. replays tonight, so uh, 
I'll be shooting out three videos, I believe, is what I'm going to try to aim for. Um, and I'll be putting them up basically uh, one a day, so I don't flood it too much so that you guys don't miss one here or there. Um, so hopefully you guys can bear with me the next three days. Um, just be me and you guys. So like I said, I'm just putting damage where I can. I don't have full map range, but I've pretty much covered all the spots. I decided to move further south here because their Chaffee is running rampant on the north by himself, and I don't want to be the first thing he lights. So I want to get tucked in behind some bushes, in a depression, just whatever I can to get safe so I can still safely put shots out and not have to worry about a Chaffee because I don't have six cents on this thing yet. So like I said, normally this, um, well, you'll see, that hill that I was just looking at south of where I'm currently looking at is um, usually a pretty difficult spot for a lot of the other arties to hit from the angle that I'm shooting at. Um, but because of how the British already works, these are pretty consistently easy shots. Um, normally the British already don't shoot short, so this is a pretty safe shot for me. Uh, it's safe to say that it goes over, and that was a direct hit again. Um, so this KV-1 is kind of screwed. He thinks he's safe, as safe as he can get. Um, and I'm kind of just ruining that for him. Uh, which, more often than not, you know, roots people out of cover. Now because it can shoot so high over here. stuff, and that was a lucky hit on my part. That was all RNG there. Um, Got him! has long travel time and because there's no splash on this tier um, you really have to make sure you're on point about your reads and even if your read is correct and say the guy breaks the last minute or reverses or gets tracked you're kind of boned you're not going to be doing damage in this thing unless you direct hit or you drop a shell right next to the tracks or something it has to be super close or direct hit so, uh, I'm sitting at almost 2,000 damage here. You know, like I said, that was, would have been a directivity to move, but, you know, there he goes. Um, this is still a pretty close match. We're only up one, but, you know, they have the bigger gun in the IS-2 and the bigger artillery in the Hummel. Same tier, but better gun, in my opinion, damage-wise. Um, you know, and by the looks of it, you know, our guys don't know what to do against the IS-2. You know, they should be double teaming that guy instead, you know, they're kind of playing a part. Um, the end of this replay isn't exactly exhilarating for my point of view, um, but it's something I did want to share with you guys as it's only happened twice in my tanking career. So anyway, I'm moving up to get away from Cap because I feel like their Chaffee and their T-34 could overwhelm my Hellcat and the Yag. And I wanted to be in a spot where even if they do get lit down there, I was, you know, I could reset. My initial intent was to go rush this IS-2 with my speed. Um, as you can see, I'm going 30 uphill. And if that KV-1 had not killed that IS-2, I would have popped up behind him and he would not even know. He would have never anticipated that. I would have gotten a freebie into his rear, and that was what I was hoping for. Um, KV-1 died. No fire extinguisher, or he maybe used it prior to this. And now I'm sitting in a spot where I am fairly safe. Uh, only thing that could come at me is maybe the Hummel. From behind. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure that their 34 and their Chaffee are on that side of the map. And the capping confirms at least one is. Now we do have a low health Yag, um, not one shotable by any means, by the Chaffee or the T-34, but definitely doable for the Chaffee. Um, here I'm getting some blind fire in, I know it's a long shot, again like I said there's no splash, I have to direct hit. So um, there he is. I think there I was probably in the middle of trying to type something and then had to stop. I waited a little too long to just get this shot off, I don't know what I was doing. I could have been able to kill him, get some defense points, um, which I apparently don't do enough of, thanks to, 
you know, those medals, those uh, class medals, the one through four class. The only one I'm missing for the best one is the defense one. So, but I would say that maybe because I play so aggressively, I'm really never near the spawn. So the Hummel kills the Hellcat, which was the higher HP tank of the two. It's just the Yag and me and the Hummel, and at this point I'm feeling pretty comfortable. Um, you know, Hummel was spotted before early in the battle, uh, so I'm trying to beeline it towards him because I think I would be the last thing he expected, but um, in good old fashion, expect the unexpected, and I clearly wasn't when this is about to happen. As you can see, I'm going 40 right now. The Hummel appears going towards our cap. And wow. And he kills our Yak. So as you can see on the minimap, it looks like he's still proceeding towards our cap. I bet you he thinks that I'm an arty player who sits at the cap. Uh, up until this point, I have never been lit in this battle. So I'm going to go to cap to draw him out because I can reach his cap before he can reach my cap. Clearly, at least by 10 seconds. Meaning that I have my buffer for in case we do both cap, um, I win the cap race. Just because I'm faster to getting to his cap and he has to still go uphill, I'm still coming, I'm just coming downhill. So here is this minute and a half long timer. I'm just going to speed this up a little bit. I don't know why it says two people capping, I think it's because maybe the rate that it was going at. Yeah, it's going at double the rate, so it's messing with it a little bit. But yeah, here I'm capping. Again, never been lit. Uh, total damage so far is 1887. I believe that's what I'll be ending with. So 1887, three kills. Um, you know, this invader. And because I haven't been lit yet, my second ever uh, Raider medal, which the first time I got was with an M40, so. Anyway, as we move on, here I am on Abbey in the FE215B. Um, Time to roll out. Did not really get it on sale, I don't think. Um, not At least not the on-track sale. It was... Uh, I don't know, it was something. maybe I might have just gotten it full price now I think about it. Because uh, I got this before I got the FE4202, which I did get on track. Um, so that was half, 30% off. Uh, off. Anyway, um, this is my FV215B. Uh, I like the tank. Uh, yeah, rear mount is whatever. Um, you can make it work. The gun, I think, is great. It's the same gun from the Conqueror, I believe. Um, which I thought was a sexy gun. Uh, it's got a great reload rate. It's um, got pretty good armor too, and a lot of health. I mean, 2,500 health is pretty good. So, um, you know, you can do an unexpected amount of damage in a very short amount of time because of the reload rate of this thing, which I believe is you'll see in a bit is like seven point something seconds. Uh, first minute or couple minutes is kind of boring, but it gets a little seal club clubbing-ishly hilarious later. So there's the 324 damage. Here I am reloading and I'm loaded. So with how me and this other 215B are positioned, we're going to be hard pressed to pen each other, especially since we're both shooting at each other's turrets. Only way we're really going to pin each other is if we hit that little top uh, cupola in the back you see on my tank. Otherwise, it's not really going to be pinning. Mm, that said, bounced off. This the glitch thing. It's it was a crit hit. Mm, don't know if I did anything, like cr crew or anything like that. I don't remember. It was a while ago. I recorded this. I mean, I. Not recorded. I played this way before PAX, so beginning of August, uh, which is about 
right before I went out to Vegas. So, it was a while ago. Um, so like I said, I've only done one damage hit, and that was against the scout. Otherwise, all these shots are kind of iffy at best. But as of right now, it's just me and this 183 in the low on this side. I can't exactly push because the shots, if I do push, and they have a numbers advantage here. So and that was a good hit by the FE 183, which I got the chance to play at PAX for the first time. Um, under one of the PAX press accounts. <laughs> so one of the guys who stood in line and decided to play tanks. Um, yeah. It's pretty easy mode, but... I um, don't know why I pulled out the way I did. I kind of exposed myself a little bit, but luckily I didn't puni get punished for it. So as you see, there's a huge... Not a huge force, but... You know, two eights and a ten are not something you want to take lightly, especially with another ten and an eight covering. I typed what I typed there to try to trick him into thinking I was a one eighty three in case he wasn't paying attention. Maybe you try to peek out and try to clip me or something. We'll see. Excuse the phone calls, by the way. I have an I have one of the phones in my room, in my office, in case of emergencies. So you might hear it ring. It always rings here once before the floor transfers over to the office. So. Anyway, I wanted to push around to help this Yai Panther 2 against these tier eights. As you can see, our Yai Panther 2 is pretty low health, and um, you know, against two tigers, you know. An, and potentially a bat chat and a you know what else a centurion 215b i mean you don't never know like i said i'm reloading really well really fast because the rear mount i don't have to expose too much of my tank to get these shots off uh, although he would be shooting down at me so that was pretty cool but i didn't do that take that much of Tiger is uh, not really the best to cut, so I'll give him that. But you know, we have a three on one here, and uh, really the the rate the reload rate of this tank is what saves me, and the armor, pretty good armor. I'm using their teammate to block. Here I thought I was a goner. So what I wanted to do was just get as much damage out as I can. And apparently the bat wasn't fully loaded. He fired, I think, four shots. So, thank you. And because of the reload rate, I managed to kill that Centurion. Um, so like I said, in a very quick engagement here, um, yeah, and screw you if you're going to try to drown and get out of this. No. Um, so like I said, that was a very short engagement, probably a minute, two minute long engagement right there at the end. And I'm sitting on all but that Type 62 shot. All that damage from this battle came from that moment. And here I am with four kills, 4,500 damage, and still alive. So, you know, I did get some help. Thankfully, the 183 came to help. Although, if the bat chat was truly clipped out, like he was, um, he would not have reloaded in time, really, to, you know, because of my reload rate. I would have gotten, you know, two more shots off for his 20 more seconds of reload. No. I think I would have been fine. So, yeah. And, um, so, I strongly recommend this tank. It's not perfect, by all means. The rear mount is kind of tricky to use if you don't know what to do with it. Um, like playing the off B, the 4502 off B. Um, but I do recommend it if you already have other end tiers like the E5 and the 57, Foch 155, 268, Batch at 62A. So, but this is something I do recommend if you do have the time to go after it. And now we'll move on. Now this is the AT-15. I don't think I've done a video with the AT-15 yet. I'm trying to 
new videos with tanks that you guys haven't seen on our channel quite yet. Um, so here's the AT-15. Um, beginning this battle is a little bit slow, so I will preface this by saying that although I may not have fought all the top tiers in this battle or whatnot, and you'll see later, um, I felt like this was a good replay, did a lot of damage, bounced a lot of shots I really wish I didn't. Um, and I think, uh, if you guys are familiar, uh, Quickie Baby was doing a base XP uh, gold like replay contest for different tank types and so I sent this one in for TDs because the base XP was roughly 1900. When I say base XP I mean um, you know uh, uh, non-doubled, uh, non-premium, no event bonuses, nothing. The base XP was about 1900 so I felt like this was a good one and if I don't make it Oh well, I had a lot of fun playing this battle, and then watching it get tripled, so... Um, yeah. Uh, I'm kind of angry here, because I want to push down with the team, because that would be the best thing to do, is support my team. But it's a tricky situation. They do have an artillery player, who if he was in the K-line, uh, K5, K1, 2, 3, could have great shots on the low road. Which I don't want to be a part of, because I'm so slow. Um, but at the same time, I don't want to leave my teammate tank. Now, judging by what I, you just saw there, the hope here is that the teammates just start reversing, because there's no way they're going to win against an E75, Type 59 Comet, 25 slash 2, IS 6, and a Super Pershing. Um, considering we only have two eights ourselves down there, um, it's kind of an identical match there. We have a Comet, the 25 slash 2, the IS 6 is, you know. So, um, it's a fair fight, <laughs> except for that, except for that E75. And our guys are trading well initially, but because of the bad positioning and because of the tier nine, they're not going to win that engagement really. Um, so I'm just watching our rear until, honestly, until this folds, because there's no way I can go down there safely and do much. Um, you know, and I'm glad I didn't go down there, uh, even though I strongly wanted to. I will say, I do have quite a few, I don't know if they're statistically good, because I don't have XVM or anything like that, like, you know, the stats XVM, but they played well in this battle. Um, one of those being the SU-12254. Um, he helped out a lot towards the end game, so we'll see. So that E-75 is really starting to hurt us, and now they're reversing. So hopefully into my shots. I'm trying to bait them into my shots. Here we go. And the rape train begins. This thing has a great reload rate. Uh, I think like six seconds. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know why it bounced inside of a turret there, but um, I mean, look at this. I mean, this is just fantastic. Great. Uh, Rate of fire, great pen, and overall great tank, great armor. So, just a little high, and because of that, it's cupolas and all the other things. There's a lot of weak points in this tank that you could have used um, if you knew where to aim, but thankfully you don't. And right now, because of my rate of fire, I'm just trying to put damage out on whatever I can and do kill shots on this. Because the more I can kill here, the less that, even if the rest of my team folds, the less they have to like circle me with, um, which is the bane of any slow TD, so. That one bounced. Vehicle destroyed. So there goes that super pushing, just aiming at that top. This thing is really accurate. So Aiming at that cupola kind of on a downward angle. So we're doing great so far. 2,000 damage, roughly. And I hit the corpse there on that one. I don't know where that one went. I'm trying to find 
find somewhere to pin this uh, E-75. Um, now my goal is just to stop it, let RDB do its work. It's just me, this 25 slash 2, I believe, who said he was stuck. And that they're keeping So. Get a little side armor. So now it's my tier A versus the C-75. Uh, other flank is losing. SU-122, as you can see, is coming back to me, so it's just the STI by himself against two tier 9 TDs. I don't blame him for losing that fight. Um, and he did lose. And our T-25 slash 2 drowned, so thank you very much for that. He's trying to kill our SU-122. Uh, I don't blame him. I'm having a hard time pinning this guy. This thing is great for this right here. Tracking, damage, retracking. This is SU-122-54, look at this baller. I, I missed that tank. Kind of. I debated charging down because of the fact that there's really no way back up. so it doesn't kill my buddy. Finally decided to aim at the cupola. Got the kill. Should have been doing that earlier. I don't know what the hell I was doing. I didn't have my tank turned enough to get that shot. As you can see, this, um, this gun traverse is great I mean, for a TD. Uh, this thing's actually surprisingly hard to surround because of the fact that it has a wide range of uh, gun traverse. It can turn pretty well. It turns better than the T-28, which is its tier. And it's faster than the T-28, marginally. Better rate of fire. Uh, smaller gun, but I prefer this over the T-28, so. Now it's just me and this 54, this 100 health 54, versus two tier 9 TDs and this jackass. This guy's telling me to rush, um, and I was going to, just wanted to get some free shots without exposing myself. I was really worried about that artillery um, aiming down here, so I wanted to preserve my HP a little bit better. I'm still debating whether I wanted to go up and help. And now I got him tracked, and uh, here comes the pain. Killed a 704, which was a great job by his on his part. It was like a thousand health. 704, and he got like three shots off, penned them all, and this foe is trying to circle me, and I missed that. So this is two TDs trying to circle each other, or one TD trying to circle the other. I honestly thought he had me here. I don't know. This is what I think did him in. Bounce there, so G a G to the Foch. Here I am sitting at 5,400 damage so far. One on two. Um, I am not concerned with the AT7 at all. Uh, you know, I just have too much armor, and we have, you know, our tanks have the same benefits. Which is high rate of fire, and if that's the case, then, you know, my tank with the better gun at a higher tier, better, you know, is going to win most of the time. Um, especially when, you know, he's not exactly full health. Uh, the only concern here is the, is the artillery. Now, I spot this guy before he even spots me. Uh, I don't get lit until... Hit, so now here I'm just aiming at the weak spot, which I was fortunate enough to hit twice. So 
Right, now I'm reversing for my life here. Because I do not want to get killed by Artie. Here I am with 6,000 damage, 5 kills. Now the concern here is because the M53 is so fast, if I push to their cap, he can push into mine faster and he will beat me cap wise because I am not going to be able to get back. Depending on how far up I make it. So that was one of my concerns here, but I decided, you know what, let's just go for it. Um, I, you know, considering that I don't think we should have even won this match based on what the score was and what tier tanks that they still had alive. Um, you know, I was lucky that their guys weren't penning me. And my SC-122-54 buddy was really, really on point. So, thank you to Ayudin. Uh, I've seen him around before. Uh, don't know how he is statistically. Don't care. He did great here. Um, so, big ups to him. Uh, yeah, watching this thing kind of drive is a little silly, but here I am. Coasting. Uh, as you can see in chat, I try to ask who, if they're still here, got killed by Artie, so I can figure out what angles the shots could have come from, where to expect him. Because at this point, I was thinking maybe he's at their cap. Um, so, I need to find out where in his cap was he most likely going to be based on the trajectory of where my guys were getting killed. But no one answered. So, yeah. Now see, this is just awkward that the AT-15 has to be the one doing the chasing. Um, slow as shit. So it does make for an interesting chase, if you want to even call it that, but here we go. This guy's trying to tell me what the reload rate of the RD is, and he's, he's wrong by the way, but... So anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one, uh, I guess part one of however many of my return trip, or return to YouTube, so I uh, hope you enjoyed this all British one, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the tanks that I showcased here, hopefully I haven't showcased any of these before, so yeah, so hope you guys enjoyed.